How's it going everybody? I'm Josh KI6NAZ. Last year I did a video on explaining why it's not a good idea, even if you're preparedness minded, to just buy a Baofeng and put it on a shelf and say, hey, I'll use that when I need it, when it's an emergency. I think the video landed pretty well and hopefully explained to people why you should get started in amateur radio now versus wait for a serious issue to happen before you get involved. Two comments, two major comments that that video had. One was, what classifies something as an emergency when you can use a radio, any radio, to expedite your assistance of first responders, to save the life of someone, or save from damage to personal property? That's a very wide and vague term. The second one, second comment, was, Hey, Josh, why are you talking about this? You're a, an engineer, you're not a lawyer. How dare you? Not really that bad. Somewhere, somewhere. So I hear you. So today, very special. JD, a lawyer, explains the YouTube channel is here to answer these pertinent and important questions about when you can use a radio in an emergency. What qualifies it as an emergency? Let's get started. So curiosities on emergency communication, transmitting outside of your privileges. As amateur radio operators, we obviously have the ham radio privileges, but what if you stumble upon an emergency situation and you have the ability to transmit outside? Maybe there's a radio there on the ground or whatnot. I want to know or better understand when we can kind of explore those spaces and when we should avoid doing that. Now, I am not a lawyer. I'm an engineer by trade. but I know someone who is Tony DeWitt. How are you doing, Tony? I'm doing great. Very good. Thank you for joining me out here. Tony, why don't you give just a, a little bit of a background on what you do kind of out here on YouTube, but then professionally, why why your opinion in this case is actually pretty insightful? Well, I'm, uh, I'm an amateur extra class operator, and uh, my call sign is Alpha Delta Zero Delta Quebec. I, uh, I am uh, a Missouri attorney. I do mostly appellate work. And um, I have litigated a number of cases in the trial court and done a lot of appellate work. And I understand a little bit how the government thinks um, to the extent that the government actually thinks. I was going to say, that's scary. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, and, it, and it should be. But that's, that's what I do. Now, let me just state up front uh, that none of what I say is legal advice unless uh, you live in Missouri and are paying for it. Uh, you have to have a lawyer-client relationship to really get legal advice. And uh, so what I'm talking about here is my general understanding. If you have any questions about what your rights are, you should consult an attorney in your jurisdiction who understands federal law, who practices in federal court, and who would be able to assist you if you uh, wound up on the wrong side of the line here. My question was, you know, as we as we learn more about Mr. Frawley and the massive fine that he was facing, what constitutes an emergency where someone may use any type of radio to reach out for help? And it, it's kind of not exactly the clearest thing. Tony, you're obviously familiar with the Mr. Frawley case, right? What's yeah, yeah. indeed, yeah. So I I watched your video. By the way, link is in the description for for Tony's video to kind of help fill out some areas I didn't cover in my live stream. You did a great job, by the way. Uh, but what defines an emergency kind of at the top level? And then maybe let's see if we can apply it to Mr. Frawley's case. Well, it's a, that's a really good question. Um, the first issue is nothing in the regulations actually defines an emergency. And so when a statute does not offer an emergency uh, definition for a term, you go to the dictionary. Mm -hmm. The only problem is that the term emergency doesn't actually exist in the uh, in the context of of these issues. It, it's actually two other things. It's for the immediate protection of life and the immediate protection of property and also for station in distress. Mm -hmm. So uh, the government also mm -hmm. conveniently does not provide definitions for either of those things either. So. What right. you have to do is sort of uh, apply a rule of reason. Now, you have to be a little bit careful because just like you never bet on the instant replay, you should never 
take statutes or, or what anybody else tells you about things at, at their word. So what the statute actually, or what the regulation actually says is, no provision of these rules prevents the use of an amateur station by, of, in, by, of any means of radio communication at its disposal to provide essential communication and needs connection with immediate safety of human life and immediate protection of property when normal communication systems are not available. Mm -hmm. So any means of, of communication at your disposal could mean your ham radio. It could mean a bow thing that you could use to transmit out of band, uh, although you probably shouldn't. And then it also provides a condition on that, which says there has to be normal communication systems not available. So if you've right. got a cell phone in your pocket, you can't use the handheld radio to go get help. Mm -hmm. um, assuming, of course, that you have a signal. Just having a cell phone itself isn't going to do you any good if you don't An have a An established signal. way of communicating of, right. of, and, out and back. And, of course, one of the things that Mr. Frawley did wrong, and I think I covered this, is that he never identified himself by call sign. Right. So, Com tech, right? Com tech. Right. So if, you know, thinking hypothetically, if you were to, if I were here in, in Auburn, Alabama, and I drove up on a scene where a police officer had been shot, mm -hmm. and I didn't have my ham radio, and I didn't have my cell phone, I could grab the police radio off the, the epaulet of the officer and mm -hmm. say, you know, Alpha Delta Zero, Delta Quebec, transmitting out of band on 155.610. Mm -hmm. I have an emergency. I have an officer down, and I'm at the corner of college and uh, Shug Jordan. Right. And in that situation, I'm first of all, I've identified myself. Second of all, no reasonable means of communication are available. Third, it's an emergency because I have an officer down. Right. And so I think I'd probably be covered in that situation. Yeah, that that's an obvious make sense kind of scenario. There's an immediacy to that, right? It, that screams yeah. immediate need is is required that screams emergency that's definitely life right life on the line right the question now i get that i think most people get that i think that the jury of our peers our youtube peers out here we all we kind of get that right. what gets muddy for me and this is part of the reason why i reached out to you was property now property getting involved in the emergency situation was a conundrum to me and there's many people that are maybe watching this video who believe that uh, property is not involved in an emergency situation. What are your thoughts on that? Because that was a tough nut for me to crack. Well, in an analogous situation, um, I'm a concealed carrier. Um, I okay. write for Concealed Carry Magazine. And um, one of the things that you absolutely cannot do is use lethal force in protection of property, right? You can use it to protect your life, but you can't use it to protect property. Mm -hmm. uh, Although in Missouri, actually, they have some some things in their statute that does seem to permit that. It's still not a good idea. Um, but so in that situation, you have to wonder what they mean by immediate protection of property. Is it, you know, your your notebook that you that you dropped? I mean, is, is that protection of that property? I don't think so. I think what the a rule of reason and I think what a court would look at when they were looking at that particular section is, it would have to be a substantial property interest like, uh, you know, a forest fire or a, a flash like you guys have out there in California, those flash fires that run up and down the canyons. You know, right. um, I think it would have to be something like that. And you've got to get help out there. Otherwise, your house is going to burn up. Mm -hmm. And and I can see a court saying, yeah, it was proper for her to use the radio to seek help in that situation. Right. Um, but I, I do think it has to be a substantial property interest and not a de minimis interest. And, and I would point out that, you know, Frawley said he was trying to safeguard a repeater, I think he said. Mm -hmm. I think that's what he told them. Right. If he had come on and limited his communication to this, you know, I'm, I'm in a place where I don't have other means of communication. I, there is a repeater located at this institution I'm trying to protect life and pro I'm trying to protect property, property as authorized yeah. by 97.403. And my call sign is X, Y, Z. I think he would have been OK if he'd done it once. It was the repeated communications over several days that got him slapped with that huge fine. Yeah, it was it was eight transmissions in total was the count. Right. That's a part of the, the write up, I believe. And mm -hmm. yeah, th that reeks to me of, hey, you make the first call and 
you don't get the response you want, but then you push the matter. What, so yes, he, he made the call. Uh, he probably would have had no no ill will at that point, maybe a tiny fine, if any, at the one. But he didn't like the answer of the emergency folks who were actually working the fire and decided to push the matter as though he kind of knows better, which I assume pissed off a lot of people that were on the uh, the fire line for sure, right? Oh, absolutely. You know, <laughs> those guys, when they're up there, you know, they've got smoke jumpers, you got the planes yeah. dropping fluids. That's not a time to be playing around with people. No. Um, I wouldn't think. No, and not at all. That was my big question is just breaking down and making sure people understand what the emergency term means when you can transmit outside of your privileges. Because that's what really what we're talking about is using right. a radio outside of privileges or maybe you bought a maybe you bought a firefighter radio for some reason you own it you listen on it you just listen all the time but then something happens and you and you you know like you said out in California we have a massive brush fire fire starts moving in and you for some reason don't have your phone on you or maybe you have poor signal cuz you're up in the mountains and you use it to say hey there's a fire here that seems like a reasonable use case of the term emergency communication. Would you say that? I, w I would think so. Now, that takes care of the transmission issue, mm. right? Mm -hmm. But there is a separate issue. Oh. And okay. that is the equipment issue. Why like do you have equipment? It. Why do you have equipment that's outside your privileges? Okay. And particularly like with regard to this Baofeng, although I think he's probably okay because it's, you know, it was an emergency, right? Or right. what he thought was one. Right. You'd be okay, but then the question would be later on, how does your Baofeng transmit out of band? You must have one of the ones that's banned, uh, and and that would you know could potentially be a problem. I, I always I, I always see the FCC factored, being, sorry uh, I always factored that as a uh, problem for the retailer, not a problem for the end owner. And and that may very well be the case. Okay. And, you know, but hey, I, he's opened the Pandora's box to that discussion, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, he really has. They never identified the radio that he had. Right. But I would, I'd be pretty much certain that it was a bow thing. It's either that or it's some kind of like high-end uh, Motorola DMR, you know, encrypted something or other. But that seems less likely that he would have access to that. But, hey, I don't know. People in the comments uh, tell me where I'm wrong. If someone gets a fine like Mr. Frawley has, uh, what is the lawyer? What type of lawyer do they contact, and and what are what should they do when the FCC comes knocking? Well, first of all, they should keep their mouth shut when the FCC comes knocking. Okay, there's one. Go <laughs> get a lawyer. Tell them you'll be happy to talk to them once you get a lawyer. Okay, and um, pretty much at the beginning, any lawyer will do because if the lawyer doesn't understand or or is not familiar with that area of the law. What they'll do is they'll say, look, this is beyond my scope of practice. Let me get you an expert. And then they'll go find somebody who does administrative law in the federal courts, and they'll be able to help you. Okay. So e yeah, even if it's even if it's like a family friend who's a lawyer, they could be there at least in the initial kickoff to guide you to basically just say what you said. Don't talk to them. Have a lawyer present, right? Right. Okay. What you want to avoid is, is trying to dig yourself out of the hole and wind up digging yourself deeper into it. Correct. Which is what Raleigh did. Uh, that's yeah. So is that is that kind of what your assumption was? Is that it's a combination of of during the investigation, which was two times, right? He had the incident mm -hmm. commander come out, and then F, uh, FCC and agents come out, and that was kind of a an it, was it question questions they were giving him? They were interviewing him. They were interviewing him, and they had him on body camera, and of course he made admissions. Yes, I did it. Yeah, and. Uh, up until that point, they had uh, a suspicion that he did it, mm -hmm. uh, but they couldn't have proved it um, because if they had called in the, um, I mean, I suppose they could have called in the, the Forest Service person. But mm -hmm. um, generally speaking, I've, I've rarely seen a case where anybody talked themselves out of trouble. <laughs> right. Right. Nobody is that good, no matter how, how good you think you are. No one is that good. Tony, why don't you give your channel a shout out? Because you've got a, quite an interesting channel that I think people would, uh, would find a lot of fun to watch. Uh, my channel is uh, JD, A Lawyer Explains. And, and basically what it is, is a, it, I take opinions and I break them down. Uh, I, I spent a fair amount of time looking at the issues in this Johnny Depp, Amber Heard case. 
And whenever something like this comes up that is definitely related to ham radio, I make a video on it because I feel like I have an obligation to, I mean, I, I am a legal Elmer, but right. I have benefited so much from your channel. Oh, thank and you. A, a lot, and, and Jason's channel. You know, I mean, there are so many of the YouTube bunch that provide information all the time that I believe is tremendously helpful. So this is me giving back. Oh, and anybody you. who has a question, all they have to do is email me at aldewit7 at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. And if it's something I can answer quickly, I will do that. And uh, I'm only authorized to give legal advice in Missouri. But if, uh, if there's a question, I can give you some general information that might be helpful. And, it, and, and also, you know, somebody says, hey, I'd really like to see a video on this or on that. You know, the Supreme Court just released two new opinions that are going to make waves. And I'm probably going to break both of those down. Big waves in California. So, yeah. So, you know, it it, um, it gives me an opportunity to talk about stuff that I'm passionate about. I'm an appellate attorney. Most of the time, oh. I don't actually go into the trial courts. Right. I try and stay far away from the trial courts because... In an appellate court, I have to go in for 15 minutes and talk. In the trial court, you got to go for like, I think they had like, in one of the cases I reviewed, they had 80 witnesses and something like 900 exhibits. And oh, that's man. too complex for me. I can I can deal with three or four specific issues. That's that's what I do. Very and good. And I'm a writer and that kind of thing. So Another good recommendation on Tony's channel, you talked about the insulin pump thing, right? Yeah. And that I thought those were uh, really insightful uh, discussion points on neighbors' rights. It bleeds into us as hams working with neighbors, and you know where where we should have the ability to put up antennas and not, and operate our radio. So I found that really insightful too. So well, my my view on that is, for, you know, when you're working with other people in the community, is that you will never regret not saying what you think. You know, which is you're just being a jerk. You're, right. you're never going to get anywhere with that. Right. Whereas, you know, I understand what you're saying here, but let me explain to you what the rules say and, and why you really ought to think about buying a TV that wasn't made in 1950. Yeah, I, uh, I, I definitely go via the approach of you can, you can share the same information in different ways and be very successful in one way and crash and burn via another. Same information. It's just the delivery that helps. But I'm, yeah, it's, I'm it's sure the, you know that as a lawyer. <laughs> it's the medium, not the message. Yeah. That's right. Well, Tony, this was uh, enlightening, fantastic. I appreciate you taking the time. Thank you so much for being on the channel. Josh, I appreciate you asking me to be on the channel. I love your channel. I watch pretty much every video. I'm, I'm on the, uh, the Discord and I'm also oh, uh, Patreon. So um, you know, that's a great thing, and I really enjoy it. So thanks again. Hey, thank you very much. That check's in the mail for the, the, the kind words there. <laughs> <laughs> no check needed. Well, I hope you found that helpful and answering some of your questions. If you did, give me a thumbs up. I appreciate it. Also, please go subscribe to Tony. The link is in description to his channel. He did a couple of other really helpful videos on like that insulin pump thing that happened a couple months back about a woman who had a ham turn off his radio equipment because it affected her insulin pump. Do you want to know more about that? Go check out Tony's YouTube channel. I'm Josh KI6NAZ. Thanks so much for listening to the show today and I'll be back again soon. I'll talk to you then. See ya.